Laura, firstly, aged care, one of the big problem areas during this pandemic. What have we learnt so far about why and how that has been able to happen? Well, as you say, Lee, uh, accountability is important, but what's happened in the last couple of days is we've had a range of uh, figures, most noticeably uh, Daniel Andrews and Jenny McCarkos in Victoria, uh, being uh, quizzed about this. Uh, we've had the Royal Commission investigating, but it's un unfolded as a picture of the sort of chaos you sort of expected to happen but is still horrendous to hear about, uh, starting with the cases in uh, New South Wales, particularly Newmarch. We've heard that uh, that uh, staff there were being told not to use PPE unless there were cases uh, that had been proved to be negative, uh, proved to be positive, uh, and uh, also just of a lot of chaos of uh, workforces collapsing under infection rates, people being brought in uh, with good intentions but with no necessary experience, and that this then happened again uh, in Victoria that uh, that the systems just were overloaded uh, and there were not enough. Uh, good channels of communication between federal and state authorities and owners of homes in some cases uh, to make uh, a, an efficient response. And aged care, of course, is not the only area where there are outstanding questions. Uh, well, that's right. Uh, the other issue, of course, is the Ruby Princess, and there's an inquiry going on into that. Now, uh, there's been a lot of attacks on Daniel Andrews from uh, federal MPs being ramped up in the last uh, few days uh, about how he has responded to the aged care crisis and the crisis in general. But the federal government is somewhat exposed here because it's refusing to let a couple of key officials uh, appear before the inquiry into the Ruby Princess and what happened in that particular incident. So both sides of uh, politics, if you, if you regard federal and state as separate, have uh, questions to answer about these things. Uh, the federal government is uh, uh, fighting back quite hard against allegations from the Royal Commission that it didn't have systems in place for dealing with these things uh, and asserting very strongly uh, yesterday and today that that is not the case. But certainly there have been clear cases where the lines of communication have, have fallen down and there have been delays as a result which have been pretty devastating in their impact. We know, of course, it's a bit of a tale of two countries at the moment, with some parts of Australia almost virus-free compared to others. Um, the Northern Territory is deciding it's keeping its borders shut for the foreseeable future. Yes, uh, the Chief Minister, who's going to an election later this month, is talking about the po prospect of the borders having controls on them, not necessarily being closed, but having controls on them, on them for at least 18 months, which is a fairly sobering sort of number. Now, uh, the Northern Territory has opened its borders uh, in general uh, again, except to hotspots in New South Wales and to Victorians. Uh, but it just gives you an idea of the, the scope and time frames that we may be talking about here. But I think also you've got to take into account, Lee, that this coronavirus response has become a political issue of itself, as, as you'd expect. And uh, without a doubt, looking like you're taking a tough line on borders is a very... Uh, astute one, if you like, for uh, any political leader be to be doing now. Laura Tingle, thank you. Thanks, Lee. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 7.30's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.